In my last video, I briefly mentioned the bodies at Pompeii as a potential example of petrification caused by extreme heat. On further investigation, I learned that the bodies on display at Pompeii are actually casts made by archaeologists who poured plaster into the space that was once occupied by the bodies before being completely destroyed. Having said that, in recent times, even mainstream archaeology has begun to acknowledge that softer tissues can indeed petrify, and this information happens to be coming from Pompeii. This article is only a couple of months old and is talking about the find of vitrified brain. So vitrified just means turned to glass. And it says here, it appears that the heat was so immense it turned one victim's brain to glass, thought to be the first time this has been seen. Experts say they've discovered that splatters of shiny, solid black material found inside the skull of a victim at Herculaneum appears to be the remains of a human brain tissue transformed by heat. They say the find is remarkable since brain tissue is rarely preserved at all due to decomposition, and where it is found, it is typically turned to soap. So that's called soapification. You can see here that um, soapification is a process that involves conversion of fat or oil or lipid into soap and alcohol by the action of heat. So to date, vitrified remains of the brain have never been found, said Dr. Pierre Paolo Petrone, a forensic anthropologist at the University of Naples. So I, I believe that based on his statement that Dr. Petrone is unaware that there are at least two examples of petrified brains that have previously been discovered, one of them is this. This is a fossilized whale brain which proves paleontologists wrong. So here we have um, this is an amazing specimen because brains don't fossilize because of their soft tissue. Soft tissue doesn't fossilize and so the brain is the first thing that deteriorates. To create a situation where this could get fossilized is unheard of. Most fossils are of skeletons and scientists don't think that a mass of soft tissue like the brain could fossilize. But this is wrong. Soft tissue can fossilize in a few ways, such as by forming impressions in rock, by being replaced by minerals that preserve the original soft tissue shape, that would be paramineralization, and sometimes by a process resembling mummification of the original material. This article fails to mention the two most likely causes of this sort of uh, petrification, which would be extreme heat or electricity, which I'll be covering in the next video. After examining the presumably mineralized whale brain, Thomas said, it just couldn't be anything else. It really is what they say it is. And the same is true of original soft tissue fossils that have not been mineralized. They couldn't be anything else no matter how much of a challenge they present to the dogma of long ages of geological time. So here they're talking about the heat involved and it says this suggests extreme radiant heat was able to ignite body fat and vaporize soft tissues a rapid drop in temperature followed. So that's what I'm talking about with the organs as well, that there's some kind of an extreme heat that's igniting the external tissues of the body, and then that simultaneously is heating the organs in their fascial sacs, and the, the tissue surrounding the organs is being superheated, and they're hardening like hard-boiled eggs. So, it wasn't until years later the victim's skull was examined. We're again talking about the vitrified brain. Uh, and they discovered that the brains were, were vitrified, turned to crystal, rather than saponified. The preservation of ancient brain remains is an extremely rare find, but this is the first ever discovery of ancient human brains remains, vitrified by heat, about 950 degrees Fahrenheit, produced by a volcanic eruption. So we can see here, this is clearly brain material. It's undeniable. This is a whale's brain. Got different images from different angles covering the, the same findings. And you can see in here, look at this. 
This has literally turned to quartz crystal inside the brain. I believe that the reason the brain became vitrified is because the original brain tissue is composed almost entirely of fat. In the fourth and fifth videos of the Unveiling a Titan series, I present what I consider to be some rather compelling evidence in favor of the theory that the fatty tissues of creatures from small to titanic can be transformed to crystal or vitrified as they undergo the rapid petrification process, whatever it may have been. In the fourth Titan video, I also show that the red blood cells, when highly concentrated, are transformed to iron ore in the petrification process. Take a look at this rock. It looks a lot like one hemisphere of a brain in which the fatty tissue has crystallized. Though the folds of the brain aren't defined as they are in these other pictures, the overall form is there. This is the corpus callosum, the place where the two brain halves connect. These are the ventricles, which is where the cerebral spinal fluid flows. If we take a look at the blood flow through the brain, we can see that it is most concentrated centrally, and specifically around the corpus callosum. In other words, if we were expecting to find iron ore in a petrified brain, it'd be in this region that it'd be most likely to be found. So take a look at this and note the shape and distribution of the iron ore.